Today we're looking at how to perform a titration accurately. The process requires two solutions, one with an unknown concentration of one reagent and the other with a known concentration. We also need a way of detecting when one of the reagents has been completely destroyed. There are various ways of doing this depending upon the reaction used in the titration. I'm going to perform an acid-base titration so I'll be using an indicator. I'm going to react a solution of sulfuric acid of known concentration with a solution of sodium hydroxide of unknown concentration. Here's the reaction. Here we can see that two molecules of sodium hydroxide react with one molecule of sulfuric acid. Here is the equipment I'll be using. The pipette is used to accurately measure the volume of one of the solutions. It has a set volume. This one is 10 millilitres. The pipette filler is used to draw the solution up into the pipette. The burette is used to deliver the other solution. We don't know how much solution we will need, so it's a long, narrow tube with graduations. The tap on the bottom is so we can regulate the flow of the solution into the reaction. The funnel is used to safely transfer a solution into the burette. The conical flask is where the reaction will occur. It's designed with a wide base so that it is easy to see the colour change, but with a narrow neck so it can be held and manipulated easily. The white tile is put under the conical flask, again to see the colour change easily. So here we are in one of the chemistry teaching labs at the University of Plymouth with all the equipment we need for the experiment. The first thing to do is to put the burette in the clamp so that we don't have to hold it. Now to fill the burette. The first thing to do is to make sure the tap is in the off position. We can tell this because the hole that allows the solution through the tap runs in the same direction as the bar that is the handle. Next we pour in the solution using the funnel and in this case it's sodium hydroxide. And we fill it beyond the zero mil mark. We do this because we need a continuous column of liquid from the top of the burette right to the tip. At the moment, the tap and the tip below it are full of air, not liquid. So we open the tap to allow the liquid to fill the space. It's important to check that there is no air trapped below the tap, which could come out during the titration and cause an inaccuracy in the volume measurement. We can now open the tap carefully to allow the level to fall slowly. An important point here is that in a narrow tube like this, a water-based solution will exhibit a pronounced meniscus. That is, the water will be attracted up the side walls of the tube, making the top surface curved. We always take readings from the bottom of the meniscus, so we must make sure that this is what sits at the zero line on the burette. That's the sodium hydroxide solution set up. Now we need to measure a sample of the sulfuric acid. The key to performing a titration is that one of the solutions must be measured to a known volume, whilst the other, the one in the burette, is allowed to run into the solution until the reaction is complete. To measure the volume of the sulfuric acid accurately, I'm going to use this 10 mil pipette. First, the pipette filler is attached to the pipette. It isn't necessary to push the filler on too far, just enough to make an airtight seal. Then the tip of the pipette is put into the acid and the filler used to draw the solution into the pipette. Again, the solution is drawn past the mark 
that denotes the accurate volume. The pipette tip is removed from the solution and next the filler is removed and the liquid held in place by sealing the end of the tube with the thumb. By very carefully releasing the thumb pressure, air can be allowed into the pipette, allowing the liquid level to slowly fall until the bottom of the meniscus is on the line. Now that we have accurately measured 10 mils of solution, this can be transferred to the conical flask. The pipette is placed over the conical flask and the thumb removed to allow the pipette to drain under gravity. Don't use the pipette filler to push the solution out as this will compromise accuracy. Once complete, wipe the tip on the neck of the flask to ensure that the pipette has drained properly. A small amount of solution will remain in the pipette. This is normal. We're nearly ready to perform the titration, but we won't be able to see when the reaction is complete as all the solutions are clear like water. So that we can see when the correct amount of base has been added, we add an indicator. I'm using an indicator called phenolphthalein. This is colourless in acid, but pink in base. Hence, the solution should stay colourless until we have added enough base to destroy all of the acid. Only a few drops of the indicator are required. Too little will mean that it is difficult to see the colour change, or too much will affect the accuracy of the experiment. Now we can perform the titration. The conical flask is placed under the tip of the burette using the strongest hand. I'm very right-handed, so I'll hold and swirl the flask in my right hand. My left hand is used to support and operate the tap. It is important here to watch what is happening in the solution, not the level of the solution in the burette. As the base runs into the flask, it is neutralised by the acid and hence less acid remains. At this point we can see no change in the solution because the indicator is in an acidic solution. After a while, this happens. As the base runs into the solution, a patch of pink forms in the middle. This is because that part of the solution, the base has destroyed all of the acid. However, as the flask is swirled, acid is brought in from the edges of the flask and the indicator changes back again. This shows us that we are getting near the end of the titration. From now on, the solution in the burette should be added one drop at a time. Continue adding solution from the burette until the indicator changes colour throughout the whole solution. At this point, the titration is complete and the volume is read from the burette. The volume is read from the bottom of the meniscus. Note that the scale increases going down the burette. So here the volume reading is 21.85 millilitres. The most common burettes, like this one, have graduations every tenth of a milliliter. By eye, we can estimate when the liquid level is halfway between graduations, uh, but not more precise than that. This means that the maximum precision of our readings is 0.05 milliliters. This reading is recorded in the lab notebook. All well and good, but we don't know how accurate our titration is. It is quite possible that a human error crept in somewhere and affected the results. The only way to check this is to do the whole thing again. So here's the results of our two titrations. 
They are in good agreement. We say that they are concordant. This means that they agree within the limitations of the experiment. If they did not agree, I would have to repeat the experiment again until I had two readings that were concordant. So that's the end of the lab work. To discover the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution requires some calculations, but that's the subject of another video.